Hey there everybody, Racecrafter here, and welcome to a new City Build Ideas video. The newest installment in my How to Make Curved Roads in Minecraft series. This is a follow-up companion video to my previous Y intersections. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at some other types of intersections, the elements that go into making up these intersections, and some really cool decor ideas that I've got to share with you. And stick around to the end where I'm going to be showing you a really helpful tip on how to get started and setting up your layout for these intersections. So if you are a city builder and you've been looking for some content that will help inspire you and give you ideas to make your city even more awesome, then you are in the right place at the right time. I've got a lot to show you, so let's get this started. Up first, we have this really cool roundabout intersection. There are five elements to a roundabout. We have the main circle in the middle and the four entrance and exit points in each of the four cardinal directions, north, south, east, and west. Cars inside the circle have the right of way. Cars entering the circle must yield to those cars already there. So you would just be driving along this way, you would come in, go around, and just exit at whichever point you needed to. Now the great thing about these roundabouts is that there's no traffic lights, there's no stop signs. Very efficient for traffic flow, keeps things moving. So I wanted to address a question really quick. Um, it's come up in the past, and it was recently asked again, and that question is, why am I doing all these circles and curves by hand and taking all this time using the Plots website and all that instead of just using World Edit because World Edit is so much faster and easier? Well, the truth is, I do use World Edit. However, I do have a lot of Bedrock and Pocket Edition subscribers, um, and for that matter, Java Edition subscribers who just simply don't use World Edit for one reason or another. And I wanted to show them love and give them an option and a process and method for creating this stuff by hand without having to use any mods. Bedrock and Pocket Edition have no choice. They don't have access to World Edit or Lightmatica, so they have to build everything by hand. So that's why I do the videos to show you a different process and an option to do things without any kind of uh, world edit mod. Now, I was thinking, last video I showed you a quick rundown on how I use Lightmatica to create to the Y intersections, but I haven't shown you any tips or anything on using world edit. So, I will show you really quick here on how I created this circle. There's three circles here. There's the inner circle, there's the hash mark lane separator circle, and then there's the full outer circle. So I will quickly give you a rundown on using world edit to create this. To create a circle using world edit, we're gonna use the hsil command, which is hollow cylinder. This creates a circle around where the player is standing. Now you don't need a wand to select any positions or anything, the command just executes from wherever you're standing. I always like to use a colored reference block, so if I move, I can quickly and easily get back to the center and not have to fuss around with recounting anything. The command consists of four parameters, pattern, radius, radius, and height. The pattern being the block type, which makes sense because you can enter more than one block type to create a textured pattern. So that's why, at least that's why I assume they call it a pattern. The first radius number will create a circle. If you were to enter two radius numbers separated by just a comma, that will create an oval. The height, pretty self-explanatory. How tall do you want the walls of the circle to be? For the purpose of this example here, I'm going to use the same radius that I used over on the large roundabout. So the largest circle there is 111 blocks, the middle circle is 99, and the inner circle is 87. So let's type out our command. Slash slash hsil, you can just tab through and it'll auto-complete. Uh, for this one, I'm just going to use white concrete. Since we're creating a circle, I'm just going to have one radius number. That's going to be 55. Now keep in mind, in my previous videos I showed using the Plots website, that radius is from edge to edge of the complete circle. With World Edit, it calculates from where the player is standing, so you need to chop that in half, but it does not calculate the block you are standing on, and it works in odd numbers. So to get a total of 111, we're going to do 55, which is 
Obviously, half of 110 plus the block we're standing on makes 111. And for our height, we're just going to do one. We only want it one tall. And boom, we got that. Now we're going to repeat this two more times to create the other two circles. Our next radius is going to be 49. And our final radius will be 43. And now calculating this is simply, I'm using five wide roads, so I'm going to subtract five, and then I subtract one more for the block that I'm standing on. Or 49 minus five is 44, minus one is 43. Oh, not 493, 43. There we go. And now we have all three of our circles all done. And just to double check that our math is correct, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Perfect. So as I mentioned, there are two radius numbers that you can input into the command, and those will create an oval. So we'll just quickly go over that, bring up our command. Our biggest circle was 55, and then we'll just use arbitrary 65 and do it that way. So there's one for that oval, and those are separated by a comma, not a space. And then we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go 49 and 59 to get our five wide roads. And again, we'll double check that our math is correct. One, one, <laughs> one, two, three, four, five. We are correct. Perfect again. And there we go. Easy peasy, butt cheek squeezy. And that's how you use the HSIL command using world edit. Another tip is that you can kind of chop these up into chunks and then create a schematic and then you can use those elsewhere in your city. That way you have them already prepared. You don't have to keep doing this process over and over again. Okay, so moving on from big and detailed over here to simple and small. And actually, looking at it now, it doesn't quite look that small, does it? But anyway, definitely that's detailed. So this is uh, obviously a small and simple version that would be suitable for like maybe a, a suburban small town kind of area or maybe in a... Uh, shopping complex or something of that nature. We got the bike lanes on the side shown in the lime green. We've got some street parking here on the sides. We got the sidewalk bump outs here that kind of give you an option to put in some decoration there on the sidewalk. And then of course in the circle here, same concept for the roundabout, no stop signs, no traffic lights, cars enter in the circle, go around, enter or exit where they need to. And then, you know, here in the center, you could put like a fountain or a sculpture or, you know, whatever you want. Personally, I like to put a lot of greenery, you know, in a big city where there's a lot of concrete and pavement and buildings and everything. You know, a little bit of greenery is just really nice. I did not go full tilt on the decoration on this one as I did want to show something in its most simplistic form. And, you know, on the sides here, we've got some storm drains here on the side of the street um, in line with a sewer. And then, um, you know, the storm drains would be like for like big flood type rushing water that would go down. And then the uh, the sewer covers there would be more for access down into the sewer system. And then we got like the, the little detail here of the sidewalk where it steps down a little bit just to give it a little bit more interest. And then the uh, the crosswalk here, very simple, but you know, for a low traffic area for like a small suburban town area or a, or a shopping complex, you don't need a whole bunch of details. You know, you don't want to detail out everything everywhere. Sometimes, you know, less is more. And then, of course, uh, for the bike lanes, you know, if you were putting this in like a, a shopping complex or something, I can't think of anything else. I just keep coming back to shopping complex. But, I, you know, you'll, you'll be able to find areas for it. You probably wouldn't want to put the bike lanes in a shopping area. But, you know, maybe you do. I don't know. So that is roundabout number two. Simple, small but still very effective and something different than just a regular intersection. Okay, now, so now we're coming up on the traditional cross type intersections. And these next few that I'm gonna show you are somewhat similar. Um, they all have the same elements of design, but the designs do vary for the different types of situations that you would put them in. This first one, I would consider more of a medium density traffic area where we have the bike lanes here in the lime green. Um, in blue would be the bus lanes. These aren't uh, dedicated bus lanes, but buses do have priority. So regular cars can go in those lanes. But again, buses have the priority in those lanes. We've got greenery here for some nice decoration. Uh, we've got the covered bus stops here with some cool looking benches. Uh, just a simple cauldron with some carpet on top for a trash can. Um, it's got some dedicated turn lanes here. Uh, we got the uh, street lamps. Now, on the f as far as the street lamps go, I 
Over here, they're slightly different. Now, the design is very, very similar, but they're just a little bit different, just enough to make, you know, to, to change things up a little bit. And then another piece of decor here um, with bike lanes here, um, you're going to need some bike racks. So just some simple fence posts set up to look like bike racks. Um, this uh, blue thing with the slab on top, just a very, very basic and simple mailbox. And again, the trash can with the black carpet on top. Um, as far as the crosswalks go, I decided to separate the pedestrian crosswalk from the bike crosswalk. Um, do, do you call it a walk if you're on a bike? I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know what to call it now. Um, the bike cross? Bike cross? Not a walk. Um, anyway. I'm rambling. Um, I added some islands here in the middle and then kind of strategically placed the traffic lights on those islands there and they're far enough away from the stop line so they're easily visible for when you're down here. No mistaking that. So again, as I said, this is very highly detailed and everything is marked. Everyone knows where to go. Everyone knows their place. There's no guesswork involved. So it, it it just provides for a very seamless and easy kind of way to get around in the city. And again, on the sidewalk edges here, I've stepped it down one just to give a little more detail, a little more interest. Um, I'm really liking these little islands in the middle. It kind of promotes um, slower speed through the intersection for safety reasons. And it kind of gives you a little more of a guideline of where you need to go and uh, you know when you're making your turns on these ones i started adding some buildings some kind of like new york style apartment buildings here where they've got like this little area down below the sidewalk kind of thing i thought that was a really cool uh concept real cool little detail you know something a little bit different and then over here we got the makings of a restaurant um, maybe with some, uh, some apartments on top, maybe the owner lives above, I don't know, you know, another New York style, uh, apartment building here, just, you know, just to kind of liven things up. And again, with the greenery down with the medians, you've got a lot of options there for, uh, decoration. And what I've done is, uh, used a lot of leaves for bushes and stuff, but I've changed it up. I've used all the different types of leaves for different textures, different colors, just so everything's not quite, you know, uniform in, in texture and color. Moving on here to cross intersection number two. This one, again, very highly detailed. Now this one, I would definitely consider a high volume traffic area. Lots of lanes going on. We've got the dedicated bus lanes on this one with the bus stops and that going down the middle. We've got actually a two-way bike lane on this one. So there's, uh, you know, two-way traffic for the bikes, assuming there's going to be a lot of traffic going through here. Uh, a lot of pedestrians, a lot of bicyclists, so or cyclists. Now, this section here, um, I found this kind of interesting. What this does here is that imagine on the right side like over here there's a, a big office building or a big apartment building and when you're downtown and people are trying to park on the side some people get double parked people are slowing down to try and find a parking spot what i've done here is kind of separate that from the main traffic so the main traffic on these two lanes over here is is constant there's no interruption and you can go on these side little sections here and where I've got the kind of checkered white and uh, gray marks here, that would be kind of like a loading unloading zone or maybe a, a parking zone where you kind of just leave the car running kind of parking, waiting for somebody to come out or to go in or, you know, something like that. So this would be like the slow speed area here. And then the main traffic over there would be would continue at the higher speed just to separate the two and not have people like getting crazy and slowing down and, and disrupting traffic like that. So I thought that was a real interesting idea to kind of keep things separate like that. And again, here with the islands in the middle, kind of keeping, uh, giving people more of a, a directional idea of, of where to turn and, and how to go. And again, with the crosswalk, pedestrian crosswalk separate from the bike cross, and, you know, everything's marked, everything, everyone knows where to go and where to be. And then this one, I added a crosswalk going right down the middle that joins up the two bus stops, just to give it a little bit different uh, interest to it. And obviously this is a huge 
intersection, very wide and, and a little bit narrow. So those islands, I believe, would help quite a bit in the uh, directional aid of, of when you're turning and things like that. And then, of course, with the traffic lights, again, being strategically placed on the islands far enough away from the stop line so they're easily visible. There's a traffic light that is dedicated for the dedicated bus lane. And again, here with the covered bus stops with the benches slightly different without the backs to them where they where people could sit facing either direction. And again, with the street lamps, slightly different design, but still very similar for street or, you know, the actual road part of it. And then the um, let's get over here to it. And then these ones here for kind of like the sidewalk, lighting up the sidewalk, slightly different, but enough to keep it all similar in that. And again, with the mailboxes and the uh, bike racks, uh, we got some side street parking here on this one, kind of separated by the bike lane there. And again, with the medians and the greenery, you know, like I said, all of these are quite similar, but this one obviously being very high traffic area and um, with the dedicated bus lanes that it really helps out with with all the, the walking traffic and that and people getting around using public transportation. And this last one I have to show you here again, probably in the medium density traffic uh, category, uh, again, with dedicated bus lanes, just slightly different design then over here rather than having the bus stops in the middle the bus stops are on the side and the lanes run through the middle uh, again with the bike lanes here and the side street parking uh, more median with uh, greenery decorations on um, the little bump out here in the sidewalk that we that I showed you from the first small roundabout you know gives you another option to throw in some decoration here and um, again with the islands that stick out that give you the 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 kind of a directional thing for turning uh, at least that's the concept i have in my head and a little bit different with the walls here kind of maybe you know maybe just some kind of barrier thing that helps protect the uh, pedestrians in the crosswalk and again a separate crosswalk for pedestrians and for cyclists and also the sidewalks here do step down here i kind of rounded them off a little bit they don't look very round when you're close up but as you get kind of further away they look a little more rounded off so just a slight little difference in design but you know something that that makes it just a little bit different and the one thing that i really like about this design i haven't quite decided what what i want to do for the traffic lights but if you notice there's only two you know for each direction there's only one traffic light post so I was able to design this in a way that if you were here, you know, you could see that the traffic lights there and the buses have their own separate traffic light and there's nothing else that is like distracting or taking away from the, the vision, you know, and, and not like littering with traffic lights. I really like the, just that simple concept of it where there's just one pole and it takes care of all the different directions for the traffic lights. And on this one, I just started with a few buildings here. This is uh, like, I don't know, maybe like a, a professional building where you have like doctors, dentists, lawyers, whatever in there. And then this over here is actually something I had built for an SMP, but never got around to building it on there. So I figured I'd bring it in here. The lime green just kind of happened to match. Um, it's uh, the rogue headquarters. And whoa, what happened? <laughs> Oops. <laughs> what happened there? It's supposed to say rogue. Oh, I know. I used <laughs> I used a, a schematic to mirror the side to put it over, and obviously the letters got all jumbled up. That's funny. That's funny. I don't even know what that says. Now, this is one of the most important things that I did not know about or think about when I first started building my city. Building the roads first is such an important key to layout and all that kind of stuff. Once you have your roads all set up and in place, it makes building the buildings and everything so much easier because you don't have to pre-plan. Because if you start building buildings and then putting your roads in between them, and then you start coming up with different ideas for, oh no, I need to widen this road, so now I've got to move all this stuff left or right or up or down and then you know things get all kind of jumbled and then you start spending so much time on the small little things and you know fixing all these little problems that you kind of come up with instead of building the roads first and then 
going in and building the buildings. It makes things so much easier. Once you have a full plan of your of your intersection, of your roads, of how wide you want to do it, and the the extra details like the side street parking or you know how many lanes you're going to have on each side once all that is all planned out and in place makes building the buildings so much easier you don't have to go back and fix things you can just start building stuff and progress a lot faster so as promised from the beginning i am going to show you a tip on the process that i use for setting up and laying out all these different types of roads and intersections and things like that. Now, there's going to be some factors involved that are going to uh, determine what you're going to be using as far as the elements of each road and stuff. So whether it's going to be like a downtown city part or if it's going to be suburban or rural or things like that. So once you've kind of determined what area you're going to be in, that's going to help you get an idea of what elements that you need to add to this thing. So what I'm going to show you in this example is kind of a crossover where you, we have a large main street going through a partial suburban area where on the street corners and that is more commercial with stores and stuff and things like that, which is pretty common here in California where I live. So it's something that I've seen a lot and I'm pretty familiar with. So let's get started. So with this area, it's going to be pretty medium, maybe medium to high density traffic flow. So um, I'm gonna start with a wall here on the side and this wall would be separating kind of a sound barrier between the street and the housing where all the housing would be kind of behind this wall and then as you come this way or whichever way you would get to the corners and that's where, where the commercial stores and stuff would be. So we're gonna start with a wall over there and then um, I'm going to probably add a little buffer, it's not necessarily a sidewalk, but it could be a sidewalk like that, or maybe some, uh, some grass that would kind of separate the wall from the actual bike lane that I'm going to put here, because being, uh, suburban housing here, uh, there's going to be some bike traffic. So we'll add our bike lane here, and I'm not going to use the white lines here. Uh, I don't really feel that it's necessary in this case, um, but I do want the bike lane separated from the traffic flow of the street because it's going to be a medium to high density fl traffic flow area. It's going to be higher speed, so a little bit on the safety side and keep the bike lane separate from the actual traffic. So then um, We'll have a sidewalk here and probably going to have a five wide sidewalk. You can go three to five depending on the uh, the area, you know, use your own discretion, however you really want to do it. I like to use five. That's a pretty good buffer zone for a sidewalk in this situation. And then I'm going to have a, a pavement uh, kind of separator between the actual driving lanes and the sidewalk. So then we'll have our white line here. White lines go next to the sidewalk. Yellow lines go next to the median. The yellow lines kind of separate the two different uh, traffic flow directions, whereas the white lines um, don't, I guess. <laughs> Not quite sure, really. I'm going to have a five wide lane road. So one, two, three, four, five. And I think on this one, I'm going to have five wide or uh, three lanes for each direction so that's one lane one two three four five that's two lanes and then the third one two three four five and our white uh, sorry yellow line goes here and we have a little pavement buffer and now we're going to have the median here in the middle now i know in this situation i want to have dedicated left turn lanes so I want to make this median section wide enough to incorporate those and still have a small median separating the lanes once the turn lane has been uh, implemented. So I'm going to go with at least, um, I'm just going to pretend here, and this is going to be like the turn lane. So that's going to be a line and then one, two, three, four, five, that's going to be that's, that's going to be the, the length of the actual dedicated turn lane. And then I want to add probably three more, three, four, another five maybe. So that way I can have um, a median, small like this, that would separate this turn lane from the oncoming traffic coming from this way. Sorry about that. My mouse kind of slipped out of my hand there. So that's going to be for that area there. And then, you know, this this is still going to be 
mostly a big median going this way. Actually, we'd be on this one. You know, so this whole section here, where there's no turn lane, that would be a median. So then once we get over onto this side, this will be just a kind of a mirror of what that side is. So then I would just kind of complete that going over to that side. And that's how I get set up. And then once I've got just this small little section, you know, to my liking and how I want everything kind of set up, then I go ahead and build the big parts and make it long and, and do all that stuff. But getting this part set up and getting all your ideas in your head and making sure that you're happy with the with the layout, that's so important because if you just start building big stuff and that, you're just gonna be changing big stuff. So it's so much easier to change small stuff like this and get it to your liking and then you can go ahead and start building the big stuff. So I hope that was helpful. Um, it, it's, it's a real simple concept, but you know, sometimes you just get ahead of yourself, you get excited, you just start building stuff and you're like, whoa, wait a second, I didn't think about that. Darn, I wanna add that, I wanna add this. So just getting started like this really helps with the overall picture and just kind of helps you progress quicker and not have to go back and fix things all the time. So I hope you enjoyed this video about the different intersections and uh, the different ideas and different things that you can do and, and all the details. Now, I could probably go think of other stuff to add, but, you know, these are, are still very highly detailed. And once you, you kind of get into the rhythm of doing these, creating different styles and different... Um, designs for the different types of areas that you'll be putting these in everything gets much simpler and you can just kind of reuse different aspects um, of each intersection and incorporate them into different and new ones you know everything there, there there's only a certain limit to what you can do and what is really needed for you know streets and intersections but just kind of changing things up just a little bit just to make things a little more interesting and not to have the same carbon copy of stuff all over your city so that way you can have some interest and some difference in in, in everything that uh, that you've got going on so thank you so much for watching i have hope that uh, I've explained things and I've shown you a bunch of different things that can inspire you and that can give you ideas for stuff in your city. And uh, I've got more videos like this coming up. Uh, I don't know if you caught it. I had maybe a teeny bit of a spoiler over there, but next video coming up, I'm going to be doing some highway interchanges. And I've got some big plans for that. Some really cool stuff going on there. And uh, it, it, it's been fun doing all this stuff. Uh, it's been a long time since I've actually really hunkered down and built city stuff. So I'm having a lot of fun with this. And uh, I, hope it's being, I hope it's useful to you guys. So uh, let me know down there in the comments uh, what types of city things that you'd like to see. You know, if you want to see different aspects. I know I've gotten requests for roundabouts. I've gotten requests for highway stuff and bridges and that. So that's what I'm kind of going towards. So... Uh, so let me know if there's anything that, you know, specific that you want to see. And there's a spoiler right there. We'll, we're, we're just going to avoid that. You saw nothing yet. <laughs> so once again, thanks so much for watching. And I will see you all in the next one. I'm out of here. See ya. Whoa, 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 whoa. Where are you going? I got awesome over here on the left. I got more awesome over here on the right. And for all the awesome, click that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. See you next time.